This is one of a multiple videos discussing the GNS3 REST API. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use bash scripts to manipulate GNS3 topologies using the GNS3 REST API. So on the documentation, the samples use curl. You can find out more about curl by simply searching online. Curl is open source free software, which you can download for various operating systems. So you could download this as an example for Windows and many other operating systems. In my example, I'm using a Mac. So curl is already available to me. I'm also going to use a bash shell. You can now run bash on Windows 10. So you can either do it that way, or you can simply use curl on Windows to do something similar to what I'm showing you here. So as an example, this is the curl command that we've shown in the documentation. So on my Mac, I'm going to use nano to create a file called get GNS3 version. And I'm simply going to paste the command from the GNS3 documentation into that file and save it. And now I'm going to use bash get GNS3 version. And notice we told that this is the GNS3 version, version 201. If you want to get a list of computes, what I can do is copy get GNS3 version to get GNS3 computes. And then let's edit get GNS3 computes. And all I need to do is change this line to computes. Save the file and then run bash get GNS3 computes. And we can see a list of computes running on GNS3. You can see as an example that we've got a compute ID of local. That means I'm running GNS3 locally, but I'm also running GNS3 on the GNS3 VM. I could see that through the GUI by going to GNS3 preferences, going to server. Notice the local server is enabled. And notice I'm using the GNS3 VM. Now, for those of you that are security conscious, notice you can protect the server with a password. So you can protect the local server with a password. I'm not doing that in these demonstrations. You can also protect the GNS3 VM by making modifications to it. So you can implement more security than what I'm doing here. But as an example, let's grep for compute ID and notice we told that we've got local and GNS3 VM as servers. Again, you can get more information about the architecture of GNS3 by looking at the GNS3 documentation or having a look at the video where I explain the architecture which I've linked below. Now in this example, what I'm going to do is simply start various nodes on a current project. So the project that I want to look at is Paramico 2. To get a project, we use a get statement for projects rather than a post as shown in the documentation. So what I'll do is copy get GNS3 version to get GNS3 projects, and then I'll edit get GNS3 projects. So what we need to do here is change this to projects per the documentation. So I'm just going to change the URL. So that looks right. Save the file. And I'm going to run bash get GNS3 projects. Now I have a lot of projects. 
I'm gonna press Control F and let's search for Paramico. So that's Paramico 2. That's the project that we're looking for. This is the project ID. So what I can do is edit, get GNS3 projects. And I'll paste that project ID in. So now when I run bash get GNS3 projects, or rather bash, I can see details of the Paramico project. So let's edit that. And what I'll do now is search for nodes. So I'm gonna add an additional line looking for nodes. So I'll cat this so that you can see what I've done. All I've done is copy the first line to another line and add hyphen nodes at the end. So bash get GNS3 projects. This will show me the project and the nodes. So there's the project ID for one of the nodes as an example. And here's a node ID. So what I'm gonna do is grep for node ID. So they're my node IDs. And this is where a proper text editor like Sublime Text may be useful. This is the command that allows me to see the nodes. But what we wanna do now is start each of these nodes individually. So what we wanna do is we wanna replace this text with something else. So we wanna replace that with the statement. So I'm gonna do a replace all. So the command that we need to do is call hyphen x post. So let's do a find and replace. I'll replace curl with curl hyphen x post. Replace all those lines. Don't need that on the first one. But this is what we need on the other lines. And in the documentation, we need to add start at the end, followed by hyphen d and brackets. So let's replace that statement with the statement, so replace all. And let's confirm that we've done a right. So curl hyphen x post point to the local host, point to the project, nodes point to the node ID, forward slash start hyphen d and brackets. So that looks good. So let's copy that. And what I'll do now is create a new file and paste those commands in. Got some spaces here, so I'll remove those and then save the file. So currently, all devices in the topology are off, but if we've done this right, we should be able to start all the devices. And there you go. Notice all the devices have now started up. So programmatically, we started the entire GNS3 topology. So let's create a new file. And I'll do a replace. So let's replace start with stop. Replace all. I'll copy that. And let's create a file called stop genus three project. Paste that in, save the file, and let's run stop genus three project. So now notice the devices in the topology are stopping. And again, if I wanted to start them, I could simply run that script again or stop them by simply running the script again. Now that's a fairly simple example of how to use the REST API. 
I'm using the REST API to start and stop devices, but you could do more complex things by creating your own bash scripts. The Genius 3 documentation shows you options here, such as adding visual elements, creating QMU nodes, creating Dynamips nodes, looking at notifications, and there are many other options that you can use through the REST API. That was a very basic example of using a bash script with curl and interacting with the GNS3 REST API. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.